So today we will uh, deal with uh, system level analysis and modeling of uh, RF and microwave circuit exhibiting nonlinearities on multi-scale time constants. So in fact, we will try to cover today um, the full story. That is to say, we will start from the component modeling at transistor level. We will have an overview about the different steps uh, needed to extract a transistor model uh, at component scale. Then we will see how to validate such a model using uh, load pool measurement. We will have a brief overview about uh, load pool measurement as well with our partner uh, uh, Anteverta on behalf of Mori Microwave. And then we will use this compact model to design a power amplifier. So it will be an elementary cell, 10 watt uh, PA. So we will deal with compact model, PA design, so with our partner um, AWR as well, which has used our model, in fact, to design a small PA using our transistor model. Then we will use this PA and we will analyze the performances of this power amplifier to see what are the different effects we can observe on this PA, especially if we want to amplify some modulated signals. What are the targets, design targets, and what are the unwanted effects that can be observed on such a PA. And then we will see how to uh, use this PA design in order to extract an equivalent behavioral model of this PA in order to run a system design. So that will be the very last uh, step of the presentation. So we will try to stay in line with uh, the agenda here. Uh, as a first step, we will have an overview about how to extract a GAN-FET compact model uh, using uh, a software which is really dedicated to this uh, activity. So we will cover the modeling extraction flow, see how to extract a model from a small signal FET modeling, uh, we will see how to extract the model of the output current source, the model of the diodes, the nonlinear capacitance of the transistor, and we will see how to implement such a model in a, simula a circuit simulator such as microwave office, and we will uh, see the model result in this simulator. In order to extract such a model, we will cover different steps. The first step will be to extract a small signal model. That is to say, we will have to extract the extrinsic parameters of the model that will help us to find the good set of intrinsic parameters uh, of this model. And we will also have then to extract the model of the nonlinear current source, uh, the drain current, for example, as a function of the uh, input gate voltage. Then we will have to extract the model of the nonlinear capacitance of the transistor. Mm. We will see how to address the thermal uh, behavior of such a model, and if we are dealing with a gallium nitride technology, we will see how to um, address the trapping effects. So let's start with the first step, which is a small signal extraction process. So if we look at the topology of such a model, uh, on the left side, the gate access, so you can see that we represent the gate access uh, by an inductance, a parasitic resistance, a parasitic um, capacitance as well. The same for the drain access and the source access. The challenge it will be to uh, give a good value for these different elements. And it's a very important step because if we are not doing a good job for the determination of this element, then the rest of the process will be on the... Um, we, they will, it will not be on good basis, so it's really important to really address uh, this topic. So first we will do some measurements from pulsed IV measurements. That is to say we will select one IV point which corresponds to a given set of uh, S-parameter measurements. And for this S-parameter measurement, we will uh, see what are uh, the corresponding uh, the response of the model. And then we will try to find a set of extrinsic element that describes the access line, for example, and using this extrinsic element, we will de-embed the measurement to the intrinsic reference plane of the transistor, and we will observe if this um, de-embedding is able to provide me a response for which 
the intrinsic parameters are independent of the frequency. That's the first criteria. I need to have intrinsic parameters that are independent of the frequency. And then I need to, all, to obviously have a good fit between the measurement and uh, the simulation process. And also, I need to have a realistic behavior of uh, the different parameters. So for example, I need to observe the transconductance of the model, see if this one makes sense. I need to check that I have realistic value of the resistance. Obviously, I need to avoid negative resistance value, for instance, and so on. So this is the very first step. So let's choose some different pulsed IV point. Pulsed because, in fact, this way we avoid the thermal uh, heating. We provide very short pulse, so there's no uh, dissipated power. And we can extract, for a given temperature, an equivalent linear model. Then uh, we need to go from the linear modeling step to the nonlinear modeling step. So the first uh, step is to extract the equivalent uh, IV model, the current source. IGS and IDS are given here, in fact, so I will represent uh, the current source is here in uh, the red box, but I will also extract the model for the input diodes. Here, um, we uh, proposed a current source model, uh, which is our own current source model, but the formulation of this model is uh, very beneficial because it enables to uh, accurately uh, determine the IV characteristic plus the derivative of this IV characteristic. So in order to address this work, we have defined different parameters, and you can play with the different parameters in order to optimize um, the current source uh, behavior. So this is done through uh, an optimization. So here we will select all the IV points, and we will try to find a set of parameters for the current source that will uh, enable to optimize uh, the, current, the model current source response. So here, obviously, it's a qu rather quick uh, on this video, but obviously, we, if we need to improve the model again, we still uh, need to spend more time on, on this work. So this is the current source description, but so we propose our own current source, but if you want to define your own equation, you can enter your own equation into the software, and it will update the number of parameters that can be updated to uh, address a good fit. Uh, looking at the input current diode, we are using basic equation in order to represent the diodes, and we will have to tune uh, the parameters to uh, fit, for example, the input current, the gate current, uh, as a function of the gate voltage and drain voltage. Then we have to extract the nonlinear capacitance model. So the nonlinear capacitance model, we are using one dimension capacitance model. That is to say, here you can see in the boxes uh, this uh, nonlinear capacitance. So, so we have CGS at the input, CDS at the output, and CGD uh, on the top side. So here we are using one dimension capacitance because in fact it really simplifies the model without uh, degrading uh, the accuracy of such a model. So in order to avoid a two dimension capacitance model, that is to say a model that depends on both VDS and VGS, we will just select some point around the expected RF load line, and instead of uh, having a model CGS that depends on both VDS and VGS, we will just uh, provide a model CGS that will depend on the intrinsic VGS voltage. So you can see that if I select only this point around the load line, in fact, I will be able to simplify the behavior of the nonlinear capacitance. So here it's the same approach for the different capacitance, in fact, CGS, uh, CGD, and CDS. So here it's the last one, it's CDS. So it could be a linear capacitance, but if needed, we can also uh, provide a nonlinear model. So finally, when I complete this uh, linear model work, nonlinear model of the capacitance, the current source, then I have a model which is valid for a given temperature. So it's, an, it's not a, an electrothermal model. So I need to reinforce, to improve my model, to add a new variable, which is the temperature. So here I will add the temperature parameter into this model. So in order to improve this model, in fact, I will add two different circuits, which is a dissipated power uh, model 
and the thermal circuit, the thermal equivalent circuit. And this, um, so these two circuits will be driven by the dissipated power, and the output will be the temperature, and this temperature param parameter will be then used into the nonlinear current source and in the diodes as well. It could be also used in the nonlinear capacitance model if needed, but it's not mandatory. So how to, to extract such a thermal model? So here the idea is to make pulse IV and pulse S parameter measurement on wafer, and we will control the temperature of the chuck of the probe station in order to extract a model for different temperature. So in this example, we have uh, one model for 25 degree, and we have one model for 150 degree. So we will have two different models, and instead of having a fixed parameter for each temperature, we will uh, describe a linear behavior of, given, of some parameters uh, for different temperature. So this way, uh, we will add a new variable into the model that will be the temperature. But if we only do this work, in fact, it will not be a dynamic uh, thermal approach. So we need also to address the dynamic effect of the thermal heating. So to run such um, uh, work, we will use uh, some, we will compare some DC IV measurement and pulsed IV measurements. And we will use uh, cross the coincidence method uh, in order to see uh, where uh, the DC measurement will cross the pulsed IV measurement for a given uh, gate voltage and given drain voltage. And you will, using this pulse, so we suppose that the thermal heating with pulsed IV uh, measurement is negligible. We will use this basic equation to calculate uh, the equivalent uh, resistance of um, the model, the thermal resistance. So we will determine the RTH uh, value uh, for uh, the model. And the RTH value, the global thermal resistance, in fact, is uh, the sum of the three resistance you have uh, on the bottom here. Because, in fact, if I want to have a dynamic model, I need to have um, different time constants that need to be addressed. That's the topic of the presentation today, different time constants. So if, for example, if because of the topology of the transistor, I have different time constants, I will need to have a dynamic model which give me three different time constants, for instance. So here we will use three different RNC cells that will represent the thermal behavior of the circuit. So what are the split of the resistance uh, between these three different resistance value and what are the value of these three different capacitance model? We will use a long pulse measurement approach. That is to say we will provide a one millisecond pulse width and we will observe over time um, the current decrease because of the self-heating. So here in this approach, we are not providing a large voltage uh, swing on the drain side in order to, uh, uh, we, we don't want to activate the trapping effect in that case, we just want to be focused on the thermal heating. So this is why we provide a short swing on the voltage uh, on the drain, but we will drive uh, at a high uh, current value in order to trigger the self-heating. And looking at the decrease of the current over time, we will try to define what are the values in order to represent uh, this um, behavior. And obviously, this work is done into the circuit simulator because we need to have time domain uh, simulation capabilities. And the very last step is to uh, extract the thermal model if needed. The, sorry, the trapping effect model. So we will take into account uh, some uh, unwanted behavior because of the trap effects. So the idea is to put a circuit which is in front of the current source model, and this circuit will represent the lagging effect. So here it's a simplistic uh, description of this uh, circuit. So let's say you have two resistance value, one resistance which is, uh, which is plugged also to the capacitance, uh, in parallel capacitance, you can see here. And the, uh, you will have one resistance for the emission time constant and one resistance for the uh, capture time constant. And the diodes will represent the dissymmetry between uh, the capture and the emission time constant. So 
in order to have a good representation of this trapping effect, what we would like to do with the circuit is to represent uh, this kind of behavior. That is to say, if we provide a pulse, you can see that on the top part of the pulse, you have an immediate current decrease because of the capture. And it's a very uh, short time constant. While if you look at the bottom part of the pulse, you can see a long time constant of the current recovery over time. And this is because of the low time constant of the emitting uh, traps. So this is what we need to model in our transistor. And also, we need to be able to simulate some behavior, such as the modification of the pulsed IV characteristic as a function of the bias point, because the bias point will uh, strongly impact uh, the uh, IV characteristics. So we have seen that we are uh, adding different process, different measurement procedure, different modeling work in order to build a complete uh, nonlinear model. And once we have our model, we will validate this model against uh, pulsed IV and pulse S parameter measurements. So we will make sure that we are able to fit uh, the IV characteristic for um, a given temperature, a given bias point, and for different points, different value of this IV characteristic, we will check that we have a good fit of the S11, S21, S12, S22, and so on. And we will also pay attention to the trapping effect behavior. That is to say, for a given, uh, so here it's uh, the thermal effect, that which is highlighted. That is to say, we can simulate the pulsed IV characteristic at room temperature for a hot temperature, 100 degrees C, but we will see if our model is also able to reproduce the dynamic self-heating if we are simulating uh, DC IV characteristic or dynamic effect such as a wide pulse uh, characterization. And we will, finally, we will also check that our model is able to reproduce the trapping effect. So here we have three different uh, IV networks that have been done all this network have been done for the same temperature, so it's not uh, temperature influence which is observed here. It's just because of the trapping effect. So you can see that the first one is done from zero volt on gate and drain, and the second one is done from the pinch off voltage with uh, 40 volt on the gate. And so we can see that the influence of the emission and the capture of uh, uh, the electrons. So our model should be able to reproduce this. Uh, parameters as well. So it was the very first part of the model extraction, but you have seen that here we have a nonlinear model, but this model has to be validated against load pool measurements. So how to run load pool measurements? That's the next uh, presentation of uh, this seminar.